we like, looked very closely at his voting record in his two years here. And we found that oftentimes he was the only no vote in the New York delegation on issues like clean water, the only person from Ohio to Maine to vote no on Superfund. It is for those women today who don't know where to turn that you have come to Washington to stand up for. I, I find myself asking, why in the world, if you guys are so concerned about debating this, why didn't you do it in the last four years? We've been to this war. I, I can't think how many times we've tried to talk about the war. Sheila, myself, Burgess, and you that all represent Texas, there's another member in the room that was born in Texas. Who is it? Louise Slaughter, El Paso, Slaughter. Texas. Slaughter, Joe, bless your sweetheart. I, I made everybody promise one night because you've been so nice to me. <laughs> well, hold on. I thought you were a wildcat. I, really born in I thought but you were born in I El Paso. Know it. And I, I brought him a rhubarb pie. If they promised they wouldn't tell you, and I said they did. So yeah. thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. I do want to talk to you about your good friend. And our condolences, all of us who covered the Hill admired Louise Slaughter. The loss of Louise Slaughter, she was elected in 1986. She was 88 years old, and this was sudden. She went into the hospital after a fall and, um, and did not survive. And, and the loss of this extraordinary pioneer. My heart is broken, and I have to um, just say to her family, my thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to them. Louise was a person who was very smart, first of all. She was a microbiologist. She was the first woman of the Rules Committee. She worked day and night for her district and for this country. I mean, the Rules Committee meets late into the night, and Louise was there every single night. And she had a sense of humor. Everyone loved her. She was nice. And I remember uh, after her husband Bob passed away she came to me after she returned and she says honey she called everyone honey she said you know uh, I wouldn't live I'd be dead if I didn't have this job she said because I love my district and serving the people of my district and this country I miss her already. Uh, she was someone we could talk to. She uh, actually, personally, I visited uh, Seneca Falls with her in 1998, right after I was elected to Congress, and she wanted me to go with her, and she didn't know me that well. But she said, honey, I want to be your friend, and I want you to see my district. And since then, I was able to visit her district with her three or four times, and I loved her, and I miss her. I just want to say, I my memory of her not just at hearings and on, in the corridors, and we were all honey, as you point out, but there was a day uh, in October of 1991 when Louise Slaughter and Patch Roeder and Nita Lowy, they marched, those House women, all Democrats, marched on the Senate, unheard of. And we were all stunned at this, this protest against the, the all-male Senate Judiciary Committee proceeding, ramming through the confirmation of Clarence Thomas. They slowed it down a bit. He wasn't confirmed until a week later. But they just marched right over to the Senate and interrupted the Senate lunch, the Tuesday lunch. It was remarkable. It came right over. And Patsy Mink was there and Eleanor Holmes Norton. And Louise Slaughter was just right there in the middle of all of that. It was very brave. Uh, let's just, uh, you've tweeted out a picture of her, a wonderful picture of Louise Slaughter. Let's, um, let's finish our conversation and go to break on this wonderful picture of this great lady, Louise Slaughter, ever <laughs> there, Louise. a fighter to the end.
don't think there's a member of Congress that's bought more specific job-related projects to her district than Louis Slaughter. She continued to press for more investments in science and technology because she knows that they will create more jobs. We're going to rebuild the economy. We're going to rebuild it on nanotechnology, biotechnology, advanced manufacturing, because it's who we are in Rochester. I want for you to go out from this university and from this city Remembering that this was a place of opportunity and a place that throughout the rest of your life will have great meaning for you and that you will know that you are really ready to go out and take on life. Thank you for being who you are, for being a beacon in the whole United States for extraordinary research and for the answers that are going to come out of this hospital and this university that are going to benefit the whole world. Together, we have made Rochester's region the nation's leader in photonics and this institution is our proof. edge of the future of all industry in the United States of America. And I've always said, and you've heard me say it a million times, if it can't be done in Rochester, it just can't be done. The chair would ask all present to rise for the purpose of a moment of silence. The chair asks that the House now observe a moment of silence in memory of the late Honorable Louise McIntosh Slaughter. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, before we uh, get to our work for the Dean, I'd like to take a moment to celebrate the life of ranking member of the committee, my dear friend, Louise Slaughter, who last week passed away. She leaves behind a legacy of service and deep love of country that I think each of us seek to emulate. She was fierce. She was a fierce competitor. camaraderie, second to none. And of course, her famous rhubarb pie was enjoyed by all. I cherished her friendship. I don't miss her. Um, with Louise, you never had to wonder where you stood on an issue. Um, if she was with you, you felt the love. Uh, if she was against you, uh, you had to back away. Was an incredible woman. She had a heart bigger than Kentucky and New York combined, uh, but uh, she also had a spine of steel. I said uh, last week, I said, the world is going to miss Louise. I already do. I'll always be very grateful for the time uh, that I had to serve alongside her. Um, last week, uh, none of us uh, would have expected sudden of uh, this tragedy uh, 
we were here and I wasn't feeling well and it's so ironic how life has its twists and turns. And the last thing that she said to me was, Elsie, take care of yourself. I would also add at those meetings, 10, 11 o'clock, we, we had some at 12, 30, 1 o'clock, one o'clock. I was always tired, you know, somewhat disheveled, but somehow Louise looked uh, as bright as, as uh, the morning dew and ready to go, even if we were here at, at 1 in the morning. I never quite figured out uh, her secret, but her stamina uh, is truly legend. And uh, I, for one, uh, have benefited tremendously from having known the amazing uh, Louise McIntosh Slaughter, and I yield back. Thank you very much. And I'll never forget the last time we had the I had the privilege of standing across on the floor of the house uh, debating a rule with her. I walked over, and we were both uh, sort of tired. It was time to get out. I went over and asked her. I come up on her, and she didn't see me come up, so I laid my hand on the back of her shoulder, and I said, how many speakers are you going to have today? She said, I don't know, but I'm cold. I want to get out of here. <laughs> She just had a way of doing the job but also knowing at the same time about people around her. It's often been said, there's a proverb that says that all of us, it's a Chinese proverb that says we're all like chalk that everywhere we go we leave a mark. And for this boy from Georgia, the young lady from Kentucky left a mark. And that is something that I will carry with me. With that, I yield.